I'm Mike Realm, and I'm here with The Far Side. We just played on stage at the Further Future Festival. I've been touring with The Far Side for about two years now. I'm doing everything from the backing tracks and then also the, uh, the visual elements because there's tons of music videos and like visuals that we like to present to, you know, make the show bigger. During the set, like I'll do it, I'll do an opening to kind of get the crowd going and I'm just showing off, you know, I'm a turntableist, so I'm just like, scratching, juggling, whatever. But when I'm with them, you know, I'm scratching things on top of what's going on, you know, visually and musically. This is the first time I've really been able to, yeah, just be the DJ for one of my favorite groups, you know, ever. So that helps too. Every night I'm like, yes, here, run in, pass me by, drop. All right, I get to watch that amazing video every day. And, I'm just spoiled, I have the best seat in the house. I think honestly, between battling and, and performing with the far side, it's actually more nerve wracking uh, with the band because if I'm on stage by myself and I mess up, fine. I, it's just me. But if I mess up with them, then all eyes on me. And it's like, what did you do? So I'm a little more focused. I think the, the one thing that I've learned is to lay back. Like, you don't always have to be scratching. You don't have to always feel, you know, what I perceive as like silence. You know what I mean? When you're a DJ, you're just itchy. You're just like, the beat's playing and nothing's going on. Arr, you know, like you gotta do something. Just do a lazy scratch or just do, do something. Make, feel the, you don't have to. It's, it's cool to lay back, let the beat kind of like do its thing and then go in and attack it. You know, with the band, it's a little different because you, know, you have a keyboard player, you have a guitar player, you have a drummer, and everyone's kind of bouncing off each other. And it kind of taught me to really listen to what's going on. When I'm doing my solo sets, I'm always doing something because you know, it's just me on stage. But you know, over here with, with when I perform with the far side, they're obviously the majority of the show is them doing their amazing songs. And then I get my little moments and it's like, okay, cool. And the crowd really, they react to it. Yeah, I can't, I can't get rid of it. I've, I've looked at the controllers and all that, so I can't do it. And it's not to be a purist, but there are things that you just can't do without a turntable. You just can't. And having done what I've done for so long, I need those little intricacies and just to be able to do what I can do on, on the like turntable. What? You can't control the sound as well on anything like a turntable. You just can't. If you were to go to like a guitar center and try it out, you would be like, oh, uh, of course, yeah. I totally get it. Turntable versus controllers are still to me like guitar versus guitar hero. But if you want to like play the guitar, you play the guitar. If you want to scratch, you scratch records. Having said that, there are some badass stuff you could do on controllers that you can't do on turntables. And now it's like I see people on, you know, on controllers and it's like, wait, if you take the platter away, that's a whole other world. If someone could combine that, it would just be m monstrous. And when I say controller versus turntable, I'm talking about the platters. Yeah. I'm not talking about like the actual, you know, like MIDI fighters and stuff like that. Like that's a whole, that's a class unto itself. You know, I've been doing a lot of like remixes on YouTube, like a lot of movie trailers and just movies and TV shows and stuff like that. I'm remixing them. So I'm still doing that, but I'm going back to, you know, a little bit more, I guess you'd call it traditional recordings, like producing beats again, which I haven't really done in a couple of years just because I've been busy doing other things. You know what, for me, it's it was never about like, I gotta make my own music in order to get more gigs because I don't know, that just never felt like the, the train of thought for me. 
for me, it's just, I just want to do that. I want to do more, you know, more production. You know, I'm losing like my old samplers and stuff like that. Like I'm going back to, to that okay. where it's like a little bit, it's a little dirtier, you know, sonically, uh, I think the tendency these days is to just fill the track, like no room for anything, unless it's like you're a breakout, but you're back and it's just like, just like filling. I don't need to do that. I need to pick my spots, keep it, uh, you know, kind of off the grid, just kind of funky. I, I feel like a, a freedom right now for some reason. I feel like just, you know, for a couple of years, DJs had to sound like something, but I think all that is sort of like separated from what we're doing now. We can play in our sandbox. And I think that's why a lot of turntablists are starting to do that, you know, and it's, I'm just so happy that that's going on. Yeah. 